And then there were four. First, Judith Collins, age 58, MP since 2002. Then came Simon Bridges, age 41, MP since 2008. Then came Amy Adams, the first and so far only candidate from a South Island electorate, age 46, MP since 2008. And then this afternoon, Mark Mitchell, aged 49, MP since 2011. He announced his candidacy for the leadership of the National Party on Orewa Beach, up the east coast from downtown Auckland at 2.30 this afternoon. And then the man whose previous jobs include security consultancy in Iraq went back to his Rodney electorate office a couple of blocks back from the beach and told us why he wants to replace Bill English as leader of the National Party. Well, of course, um, the first thing is that I'm hugely passionate about our country. Um, that's why I got involved in politics and stood for, for Parliament to start back in 2011. Now the opportunity is, uh, has arisen uh, for some new leadership to come in and um, I feel that I've got the personal qualities that, um, that we need to actually lead us into a very strong, successful campaign in 2020. What are those personal qualities? I think I've got um, basically um, uh, very, a very strong, proven um, track record of leadership. Uh, I've had a career, I started off uh, farming and shepherding, uh, then I went to the police, I've been um, obviously part of a big organisation, and then I was part of smaller teams, uh, the police dog section and the armed defenders squad, where I had leadership roles, and then I went overseas and formed my own company, and it became uh, a fairly successful global company, and you certainly need some pretty strong um, leadership uh, qualities and capabilities to be able to achieve that. Since coming back, uh, in my own quiet way, I've gone on and provided um, support to our own leadership in the National Party, and certainly local leadership in my own electorate. You say in your own quiet way, is the problem that you've been simply too quiet in that actually a lot of people don't even know who the hell you are? Yeah, well, that's a very good point. But the reality of it is my role inside our caucus um, was actually not to be in the media um, or being, be drawing attention to myself. It was to support our leaders, uh, to support the leader and the deputy leader and our leadership team and doing what they were doing. It wasn't my job to be out there um, creating a media profile for myself. You got a bit of media profile around dirty politics and your selection as the National Party candidate in Rodney in 2011. Nikki Hager suggested in Dirty Politics that you use Simon Lusk and Cameron Slater to discredit the people you were standing against for the nomination for Rodney, did you? Yeah, well, it would have been, um, it would have been nice for Ricky Hager to, um, to actually come and talk to me about that because uh, in his book um, he talked a, a bit about me, not much, but a little bit, uh, without any um, supporting information or, and he never actually once uh, called me and said, hey, can I come and sit down with you and just clear up a few of these things and it would have been very easy, it would have taken a 10-minute conversation to do that. You said at the time, and I have the Rodney Times newspaper from August 24th, 2014, that you were going to sue him. MP considers legal action against Nicky Hager. Rodney MP Mark Mitchell is likely to take legal action over Nicky Hager's book, Dirty Politics. Did you take legal action? Well, you know, maybe I got a bit overexcited um, because, you know, I just felt that fundamentally there's a massive, um, you know, natural justice, uh, a breach of natural justice. And, uh, and so I had to learn that uh, actually in politics you're, um, you need a, a skin as thick as an elephant. And, um, and so I just decided to ch chalk it up for experience, not worry about it, move on. Was he right? Did you use Simon Lusk? I never used Simon Lusk nor Cameron Slater to go out and discredit anyone. Um, the allegations that he made in his book were completely and totally false. And not once did he pick up the phone or come and try and talk to me or clear those matters up. And I guess people can, um, can come to their own conclusions about that and why he wouldn't do that. It's a fascinating contest, this one, isn't it? Because they're strong personalities. You are absolutely determined that you are a serious challenger. Judith Collins, well, no one's going to die wondering what she thinks. Simon Bridges, likewise. Amy Adams, perhaps uh, <laughs> somewhat uh, more subtle, but still determined. What is it that you offer that uh, uh, the other three don't? Well, I'm only going to talk about myself, and, um, and I guess I'll just restate the fact that um, I feel that I've got um, uh, basically a 25, 30-year track record of providing leadership, 
good, strong leadership. And I feel that um, it does take time to build those skills. You have to know how to get the best out of a team and how to actually create a strong team. And I think that um, I've definitely got those skills. You, you're quite conservative, aren't you? You voted against marriage equality. Is that the forward-looking face of a 21st century national party? So how I approach um, conscience votes is that, um, is that I go out to my electorate. So with the redefinition of marriage, um, when we voted on the changing the drinking age around alcohol, and we're going to have uh, a vote coming up around euthanasia, what I do is I go out to my electorate and I poll them, and I'll hold public meetings, and we'll get a debate going. And whatever the majority view in my electorate is, that's how I'll vote in Parliament, because uh, everyone's got their own different views on it. I just feel actually that, um, that I need to seek a mandate from my electorate. The people that have actually voted for me and elected me to represent them in Wellington, I need to be sure that I'm representing the majority view because there's always good healthy debate around these things and it's actually a good process because it does get debate happening in the electorate. But ultimately, that vote is going to be um, completely aligned with what the majority view of my electorate is. Uh, can we talk about some other issues? Climate change, uh, increases in carbon dioxide and human-made emissions driving it. Do you believe that essentially climate change as we are experiencing it now is man-made? Well, I think it would be naive to say that um, you know, the climate isn't affected by... Uh, is, there's some, definitely some things that, um, uh, that are man-made without a doubt. The broader issue and obviously the conversation that's going on is how we'd be responsible and how we address that. Um, we've got uh, a very, very good member of caucus now in our caucus, Todd Muller, who's, um, who's working on uh, developing a very strong comprehensive policy for us to take forward. And, and of course the broader caucus uh, is a big part of that discussion and any decisions that are made. What would you most want to achieve if you became leader of the National Party and then possibly in 2020 Prime Minister? What would be most important to you? So firstly, of course, um, really when the decision's made, we're straight into campaign mode for 2020. Secondly, I'm really proud of where we are as a country. I, I think that we are the most beautiful uh, country that, um, that's actually doing very well. Um, I'm very worried, obviously, in terms of the government that we have now, that, we've, that there's a big risk that we're going to start missing opportunities and losing opportunities. But I'm hugely optimistic to, uh, for us in the future. We are, the world has become globalised, and I did have my own business overseas for 10 years. During that time, I saw some great opportunities emu emerging for us as a country. Many of those haven't actually been capitalised on yet. So I think that um, there's still a lot more that we can do. And, uh, and actually, I'm really excited. And, um, you know, I've got five kids. They're going to have kids. I want to make New Zealand uh, the best country in the world, the best country to raise your family, the safest country in the world, and for us to be outward looking and optimistic about what we can do. Mark Mitchell, one of four National Party MPs now vying for the position of leader to replace Bill English.